Hey Planeswalkers, this is Eric again from Bane Alley Magic, bringing you another weekly deck tech video. Today we're shifting into the plane of Popper to talk about a mono-white soldier tribal deck. But first I'd like to just remind you to please hit that like button or that subscribe button, it helps out a lot. So before we get into the deck, I'd like to talk about the Popper format real quick. If you don't already know, Popper is a format where you can only play with common cards, so no rares and no uncommons are allowed. Some cards have been banned, but otherwise almost every common that has ever been printed is legal in Popper. Because all of the cards are common, you can build entire decks for super cheap. I mean really, really cheap. Like you can get this deck, sideboard and all, for $36.29 on TCG Player right now less if you happen to own any of the cards. I think it is the perfect format for anyone new to the game. Someone looking to play in a way that is not just a contest of who can spend more money. And it's also great for experienced players as well, you know. Popper is a format that is very fair. There are hardly any broken cards and there are almost no complete board wipes. It makes for a much more fair and fun game for newcomers, and that is for a certainty. Popper is also gaining a lot in popularity, so if you check at your local game store, more than likely they have a Popper night. And if they don't, it's not hard to start one, considering that, in other formats, many players spend over $50 on a single card. Well, in Popper, you can spend less than $50 and get a deck that wins tournaments. So, in conclusion, I think Popper is a lot of fun and perfect for beginners. I only wish I had a Windows computer so I could play it online. So, let's get into Mono White Soldiers for Popper. So, this deck strategy is basically to go wide with a bunch of little dudes that are all pretty powerful in their own way. Going wide is a great strategy because it is easy to recover from removal and hard for your opponents to block. So let's begin with the creatures. The deck has a total of 29. We have four War Falcon, which is honestly, you know, my sentimental card of the deck. I love War Falcon. I've always wanted to have a deck around it. It's one of those cards I drew right when I started playing Magic. I drew a foil War Falcon, and just the art is so cool. And it, it is a powerful card. You know, a 2-1 flyer is nothing to shy at. But, you know, it can't attack unless you control a knight or a soldier. So that's War Falcon. One white for a 2-1 flying bird. It can't attack unless you control a knight or a soldier. Well, thankfully, every other creature in this deck is a soldier. So we got plenty of soldiers. War Falcon is also great at blocking Delver of Secrets. Even if you don't control another knight or soldier, you know, War Falcon can still block. And Delver of Secrets is one of the most powerful one-drop creatures in the Popper format. If you don't know, Delver of Secrets is a 1-1 wizard. At the beginning of your upkeep, you reveal the top card of your library. If it's an instant or sorcery, you transform Delver of Secrets into a 3-2 flyer. So a 3-2 flyer for one mana is really broken. It's really broken amongst all formats. I mean, it's even in Legacy Delver of Secrets. So anyway, War Falcon is great for blocking Delver of Secrets. Super cool. Anyway, continuing on to the actual soldiers, we have Loyal Sentry, which is one white for a 1-1 human soldier, and when Loyal Sentry blocks a creature, destroy that creature and Loyal Sentry. So, you're going to destroy those creatures on the de declaration of blockers, so it doesn't matter if their creature has First Strike or Trample or Infect or whatever, I mean, the creature is going to be destroyed before any damage happens, is the point here. So Loyal Sentry is just a great removal card on top of being a soldier. Uh, and that's what's really great about this deck, is it has a lot of cards that are just, you know, mono-white staples in the format of Popper, and they just happen to be soldiers as well. So that's super cool. Loyal Sentry, great for blocking, especially against Boggles, which is a super broken popper deck. Uh, if you don't know Boggles, it's all about enchanting a hexproof creature with a bunch of enchantments and just attacking with that one creature. So with Loyal Sentry, you can block that creature and just kill it no matter what. Next we have Thraben Inspector. One white for a 1-2 human soldier. When, th when Thraben Inspector enters the battlefield, you investigate. So you put a colorless clue artifact token onto the battlefield with pay two and sacrifice this artifact to draw a card. So Thraben Inspectors is one of those you know, really common draw card spells for, for white decks. You know, it's a great card to just have a little extra card draw, which is really important for mono-white. And uh, it's also a soldier. 
Super cool. Next we have Doomed Traveler, one white for a 1-1 one, one human soldier. And when Doomed Traveler dies, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. So it's a creature that replaces itself when it dies. And we also have a card in this deck that also lets us populate. So, you know, maybe we can get more uh, spirit creature tokens with flying. And just having a 1-1 a one, one flyer is really important for blocking a lot of creatures. Uh, you know, blocking... Um, you know, just chump blocking the uh, Delver secrets, anyway. And, uh, yeah, also just a soldier. So, continuing, we have Raise the Alarm, two copies of it. It's uh, one and a white. For an instant, you put two 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. Uh, lots of people might suggest throwing this up to four, you know, and that would be a fine strategy. You know, you just got to balance your other cards or whatever. I do have a lot of three drops in the deck, so, you know, you might consider going down a couple three drops to throw in more Rays of the Alarms. Uh, it doesn't look that powerful, but you never underestimate going wide. You know, having just tons of tokens on the battlefield is often just enough to win the game. So, next we have Veteran Armorsmith. Two white for a 3-2 human soldier. It says other soldier creatures you control get plus zero, plus one. All right, so it's pumping up all of our other soldiers. Um, but we only got two copies of it because we also have two copies of Veteran Armor, one generic and a white, for a 2-2 two, two human soldier. Other creatures you control get plus zero, plus one. So the only other creature we have in this deck that isn't a soldier is the War Falcon, which, like I said, I love War Falcon. So I wanted to include uh, one guy that could also pump up War Falcon, um, so, but, you know, maybe going up to four copies of Veteran Armorsmith might be a better idea, uh, up to you. But I also like just having this one in here, like I said, just so we can have a way to also help out War Falcon, which is one of our most powerful one-drops in the deck. Next we have the three drops. So Veteran Swordsmith is two generic and a white for a 3-2 human soldier. We got three copies of it. Other soldiers you control have plus one, plus zero. So the opposite of Veteran Armorsmith, instead of getting plus zero, plus one, we're getting them plus one, plus zero. And so if we have both out, all of our soldiers are getting plus one, plus one. Next we have Court Street Denizen, two generic and a white for a human soldier, which we have four copies of. It's a two-two. And whenever another white creature enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent controls. So this is great about at removing the blockers from our opponents. Also, you know, when we cast the uh, Raise the Alarm, we're getting two white creatures out of that. You know, so Raise the Alarm with Court Street Denison is really powerful. Tapping down two of our opponent's creatures for two mana and getting two 1-1 one, one white soldiers. Uh, that's huge. And... Um, this also goes great with Legion Conquistador, which is also a soldier, a 2-2 vampire soldier for 3 mana. When Legion Conquistador enters the battlefield, you may search your library for any number of cards named Legion Conquistador, reveal them and put them into your hand, then shuffle your library. So this is very similar to um, that bird, uh, what's it called? Um, uh, Squadron Hawk. Yeah, Squadron Hawk. Very similar to Squadron Hawk, which is a really cool card, which you could also put in this deck because it's a popper legal, legal card. But yeah, Legion Conquistador is a soldier. It's basically drawing you three cards when you play it, which, I mean, <laughs> that's huge. You know, just drawing three two twos out of your deck that all work with the soldier synergy. Yeah, really cool. I love Legion Conquistador. All right, and then finally we have some non-creature spells. Journey to Nowhere is one of the most powerful white removal spells in the format, so if you're playing white and pauper, I suggest you get Journey to Nowhere, one generic and a white for an enchantment, and when Journey to Nowhere enters the battlefield, you exile target creature. When Journey to Nowhere leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card to the, to the battlefield under its owner's control, so you get to completely exile things, so it's way better than just pacifism. You know, I always thought pacifism was really powerful, but then I saw Journey to Nowhere, and I'm like, okay, well, exiling the creature for two mana is obviously much better than just uh, making it not able to attack or block. So next we have Rootborn Defenses, two copies of it. It's two generic and a white for an instant, and it says populate, and cre creatures you control gain indestructible until the end of the turn. So to populate, create a token that's a copy of of a creature token you control. So you either have the Raise the Alarm creature tokens or you have the White Spirit tokens created by the uh, the Doom Traveler. And yeah, all your creatures gain indestructible. So this is great against burn decks, you know, against decks that are just trying to remove any of our creatures. I mean, I'd even use this against a single targeted removal spell just to give the one creature indestructible, especially if we have a token out. 
Next we have Dawn Charm, one generic and a white. We have two copies of it. It's an instant, and it says choose one. You either prevent all damage, all combat damage that would be dealt this turn, or regenerate target creature, or counter target spell that targets you. So being able to regenerate target creature is a really great effect, or counter a spell that targets you is really great against burn. Uh, more often than not, I feel like we're going to be using this for the prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn, which is called a fog effect, and, you know, that is just super powerful, especially against something like Elves. Uh, elves is one of the most broken decks in the format, you know, so uh, having a couple of fogs in the deck is, is just great against Elves. They think they're going to kill us all on, at once, and then we're able to come back from it. And next we got the lands. We have... 21 lands in total. We have all planes. Why wouldn't we have all planes? We're playing mono white. So if you're getting some planes, you might as well get these uh, sweet looking panorama planes. Artwork is just excellent and they all match up. It'd be really cool to see a player actually assemble all of the panorama planes during a game. I've never seen a player do it. Uh, so somebody should try. Jeez. All right. And then finally, we got the sideboard. So in the sideboard, we have two copies of Standard Bearer, a 1-1 one, one Flag Bearer human, not a soldier, but it's great against burn or decks with a lot of removal. So it says if an opponent plays a spell or ability that could target Flag Bearer in play, ta target a Flag Bearer in play, that player chooses at least one Flag Bearer as a target. So they have to target a Flag Bearer if the Flag Bearer is in play, if they cast a spell that has a target. Next we have Relic of Progenitus to help with Graveyards. One generic for an artifact that you tap to exile a card from target player's graveyard. Or you can pay one and exile Relic of Progenitus, and then exile all cards from all graveyards, and you draw a card. So I think this is a lot better than Tormod Script. I've had people use this against me in Popper in, in my gra against my graveyard decks, and man, this, this card just destroys graveyard decks. So a great sideboard option. Next we have Holy Light. Two generic and a white for an instant. It says non-white creatures get minus one, minus one until the end of the turn. Um, I'm thinking this is mostly good against other decks that go wide, you know, token decks or maybe elves, for example. So that's Holy Light. We got four copies of that. One more copy of Rootborn Defenses, just in case, you know, we're facing off against a red deck that's trying to burn us alive. Next, we have three copies of Fragmentize. One white for a sorcery. Destroy target artifact or enchantment with converted mana cost four or less. So that's going to be great against affinity, you know, uh, artifact based decks. And then we have two more copies of Dawn Charm. Uh, again, just if we're going against elves, we're going to put those two more copies in because elves are just super aggro or just other aggro decks, other huge go wide creature based decks. Throw in Dawn Charm to just kind of, you know, pull out a win when they don't expect it. So that is the deck. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. I'm trying to get up to 100 subscribers by my birthday, which is on July 12th. So if you could hit that subscribe button, I'd really appreciate it. I talk about a lot of Commander videos, and I'm going to be getting into Modern a bit, hopefully uploading some more gameplay videos as soon as I can figure out how to work my camera. I'm just really bad at it. I just tried to record a gameplay video, but uh, we ran out of memory on the memory card apparently even though i had like 16 gigabytes so i don't know what's going on with these weird crazy cameras so we'll try to figure it out soon anyway this is eric from bane alley magic signing off until next time take care take it easy